Today I'm going to talk to you about all the things I love and all the things I hate about my first flow hive season. But let's start off with some of the things that I love. I have to say, this season has been so much fun. I really have enjoyed tapping the honey, so much fun, and I've enjoyed eating the honey as well. Doesn't get much better than getting honey directly out of a hive like that and not having to go through any sort of extraction or filtering process and just to walk away really quickly with a jar of still warm honey fresh from the hive. I didn't know if this system was even gonna work and I can categorically say now in the UK, the flow hive system for the summer flow of honey works a treat. I've not tried it for the spring flow yet. I've not tried it anywhere near any all seed rape. I've seen people say that it works. I've seen people that say it makes a complete mess. That's one for next season. We're definitely gonna test that out. But for honey that can remain liquid for a decent amount of time, and in the UK, the summer crop is generally okay at doing that, the flow hive system works and is very, very effective. In terms of the things I like, that's about it. Not a huge amount more to say. There's nothing kind of different. There's nothing revolutionary. There's nothing that changes in terms of the management of the bees or in terms of it making it easier for the beekeeper but not having to mess about with extraction not having to mess about with any filtering is a massive benefit and something that i've really enjoyed if i was keeping one or two beehives in my garden and i wanted to manage them as a proper colony of bees but i didn't want to mess around with any honey extraction equipment and i just wanted to get a relatively modest and small amount of honey from the colony each year flow hive is a really really good probably quite a cost effective solution once you take into account the fact that you don't need that honey extraction equipment. Perfect for kids, loads of fun, and safe to say it definitely works. Right, let's get onto the things that I don't like about flow hives. And this list is somewhat longer than my list of the things that I do actually love. So we can start at the top with the world's worst designed roof. It really is absolutely shocking, that roof. It's made of wood, which means that it's just gonna fall apart after a few years. It's not flat, which means that I can't stack anything on it when I put it on the floor. It's not got enough room for a feeder inside it. It is probably the worst roof design I think I've ever seen across all of the beehives that I've got. I understand why they went with it. It looks quite nice. Don't get me wrong, it does look pretty. But for me, I take practicality over looking pretty every day of the week, and I really do not like my flow hive roof. I'm gonna swap that out next year. I'm gonna try and build something better because I'm really not a fan of it. Right, the next thing that I don't like, and I know they've kind of fixed this problem, but with the hive that I've got, it still is a problem, is the eight frame format. Drives me mad when manufacturers use a format that isn't standardized, and even using the eight frame Langstroth format, the internal spacing isn't correct. It takes a Langstroth frame, it takes eight Langstroth frames, and then it leaves a massive gap in the middle where the bees draw wild comb. Really don't like that, not sure whether that's just manufacturing tolerances or it's done deliberately. No idea, but I'm not a fan of it. It's another reason that I really don't like that brood box. Simple upgrade for me would be to go with a standardized 10 frame wooden Langstroth box. And I can see the reason they didn't do that. The reason they didn't do that is to lock you in and make you buy your wooden brood boxes from Flow Hive, which are considerably more expensive than just buying the standard ones off the shelf. Again, I'm really not a fan when manufacturers do that. They're trying to extract additional money out of people by making their product non-compatible with the standard. Really don't like it. I think everything should be standardized to make it as easy as possible. Another thing I'm not a fan of, although it's quite easy to fix this one, is that the standard kit only comes with a single brood box. I think to manage your bees effectively in a flow hive without them swarming, definitely in the UK, definitely with Buckfast bees, you need a minimum of two brood boxes. That's my own personal opinion, and it's not something that Flow have necessarily done wrong, and I can see why they don't do it because it makes the product considerably more expensive. But if you could add in that standardization with the 10 frame Langstroth National, it would be a lot easier for people to upgrade their kit and actually manage their bees a little bit better. I'm gonna try and run one of these next year using a single brood box. I'm not gonna do any manipulations. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do single inspection every single week. If the colony tries to swarm, if they try to put up swarm cells, I'll knock down all those swarm cells, which is what you're supposed to do, which is what you're told to do, and I guarantee the bees will swarm. Almost certainly they will go ahead and they will swarm anyway. I don't think you can manage it properly. At least I've not seen a method yet for managing it properly using a single brood box without just repeatedly taking splits out of it. Flow hives for me, it's not about taking numerous splits. It's about having one or two hives, maybe keeping them in your garden and just sustaining them over time. Doing it on a double brood system makes that so much easier. 
And then the final thing that I don't like is I don't like all of the little bits that you can lose. I think the design could be tightened up a little bit and I don't like the fact that I feel that there's something missing in terms of that design to get the honey out of the frames and into the jar. I've had to work through three or four different iterations this year to get me to a point where the bees don't harass me while I'm trying to extract that honey. And I just feel maybe that's something that Flowhive could develop, maybe charge an extra 50 quid for it or something. A design that actually works in terms of getting the honey from the Flowhive frames into the jar without it going everywhere. Some people I speak to don't seem to have that problem. I definitely have that problem and I suspect that a lot of other people would have it as well. But a really easy fix, I did it in three iterations using bits that I bought off eBay. Flowhive could definitely design and brand up a really nice proprietary option. So okay, one thing that I love, four things that I hate, but that's not gonna stop me using my Flowhive at all. All of the things that I spoke about there, they're kind of more like design improvements. Apart from the manufacturing of the boxes with the awkward sizes on the inside, maybe they fixed that in the later iterations, but everything else is something that I can potentially live with. I can live with the roof, even though I hate the roof. I can live with the fact that they only give you one brood box because I'll just go and buy another one. I can live with the fact that there's lots of little bits and gizmos that you can lose. They're all a minor nuisance to me. The thing that I love is that it actually works. It really is so much fun. And I have to say, if people say to me, would you recommend a flow hive, a genuine flow hive for someone starting out in beekeeping? I would definitely say yes. I've had so much fun with them. You still need to treat it as a normal beehive. You still need to do all of your inspections. You still need to do mite treatments. Absolutely nothing changes apart from the method of extracting your honey. But if you don't want to have to have an extractor, you don't want to have to have the mess in your kitchen, you don't want to have to store that extractor throughout the year, you only want one, two beehives and you want to just get yourself a small amount of honey, I don't think it comes much better than a flow hive. So there you go, people might mock me for saying it, it's definitely not a commercial option, not an option for bee farmers, not an option for anyone I think if you're going over like 10 or 12 colonies, because I think commercially and financially it's not actually viable with how expensive they are. You're better off just buying standard equipment, getting yourself an extractor and extracting that honey at a fraction of the cost. If you just want one or two hives, can't go wrong with a flow hive.